All right, so one of the new features that they added is the ability to automatically generate these bounding volumes and arrangement points. And I'm going to start off by saying immediately that this only works with OBJs and the algorithm tends to favor the A pose more than a T pose. And this is from testing multiple characters with different sizes, whether they were fat or skinny or different ages. And whenever they were in the A pose, this algorithm seemed to always work. But if I loaded them in with the T pose, I seem to always encounter issues. And it even states within the documentation that the character needs to be in the T pose or the A pose. But the algorithm, I don't know, for whatever reason, seems to always favor this A pose. So as long as you have a character in the A pose, this feature seems to work 100% uh, of the time. So there we go. You can see we've got our character with these bounding volumes and arrangement points. And it's literally as simple as doing this. So I'm just going to delete my avatar. I'm going to go and import an OBJ. I've already got a Genesis 3 Daz female over here in the A pose. You'll click on open and here's the new feature. Automatically add arrangement points. I'm going to click OK. So it's going to load my OBJ. The algorithm is going to analyze the 3D model and it's going to create these arrangement points and bounding volumes for us instantly. So that's a nice time saver, especially if you guys are reliant on this. And then you can go to Avatar, Avatar Editor, either select the bounding volumes or the arrangement points individually. And you can even adjust some of these values here. You can fine tune them or you can select some of these tick boxes over here and it creates uh, the bounding volumes of the arrangement points that's more accurate to where the hands or the feet are being placed. So it's really as simple as, and as easy as that. Like I said, from my personal experience, this works better with a A pose. I had some issues with the T pose. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but there we go. This is the new feature that has been added that automatically generates arrangement points and bounding volumes for you. All right, so another feature they added is the ability to sew our 2D patterns within the 3D window. And I just think this is more intuitive because we can arrange our patterns over here. And now we can even go ahead and sew them together within the 3D window. So let's just create something quickly. I'm going to go to my 2D pattern window, go to Polygon, and I'm just going to draw out a basic shape like this. It's like a basic tank top for our character. Right, I'm going to go to Edit Curvature, curve this down, go to my Edit... Uh, edit pattern, select this middle line, unfold, delete that middle top, uh, middle dot, uh, go to edit curvature and just drag this down. Now of course you can see our 2D pattern within the 3D window. Now, I'm going to go ahead, select this, right click and go to symmetric pattern with sewing. And now let's continue the rest of our sewing within the 3D window. So let's move this pattern, we want this to be behind our character. And I want to make sure I'm inverting the normal over here. So I'll just right click and say flip horizontally. Right, so where this 3D sewing really comes in handy, maybe if you were creating a 2D pattern and you weren't sure exactly which side, like which one of these sides needs to be sewed onto the other side in order for it to be sewed correctly, you can just do that within the 3D window. So you can see we've got the edit sewing, segment sewing, and free sewing. So I'm going to go to segment sewing. And now you can see I can actually place these points, these segment sewing points directly within the 3D window. So now I can see that this side needs to be sewed onto this side in order to this in order for this to be correct. So I don't need to do any more guesswork within the 2D window. If that was something you were maybe still struggling with, I can just do this directly within my 3D workspace now to solve any issues. And of course we can go ahead and edit our sewing over here so I can click and drag if I need to edit my sewing and you can do free sewing as well within the 3D workspace. Now I'll just go ahead and click on a simulate or press spacebar and there we go. We've created our pattern and we sewed it completely within the 3D window. One more thing to mention if you want to access some sub menus for these uh, sewing options, you'll just select something like edit sewing, go to where that sewing line is and just right click and you'll get a sub menu over here so you can reverse sewing. So if something was all tangled and messed up, you can go ahead and reverse it. Or well, These are just the basic settings that you see within the 2D window. The only difference is you're doing all of it within the 3D window now. All right, so now we also have the ability to basically sew multiple segments onto a single segment and we can do all of that within the 3D window. So just to show you how this works, I'm going to go back to my 2D pattern window and I'm going to draw out three rectangles, right? So there we go, Control-C, Control-V. 
control C, control V. Now these patterns are all independent of each other, but what I'm basically going to be doing here is I'm going to show I'm going to sew each one of these patterns onto this single segment line over here. So in order to do that, let me just go to my 3D window and move these closer. By the way, the gizmo that I'm using over here is the local coordinate, in case some of you were wondering. Right, then I'm going to go to my segment sewing, and you want to hold down shift. So shift is going to activate what's called in segment sewing, and you want to make sure that you're holding down shift while you're doing this process. So I want to choose which is going to be my main segment line, which is going to be this piece. So I'm going to hold down shift, left click, I'm going to left click here, and you'll see that these three pieces are all the same color. And all three of these pieces are going to be sewn onto the single segment. So as soon as I let go, there we go. So now I can go ahead and just press spacebar simulate. And now I've got three different pieces that are independent from each other, but they are all sewn onto the single a segment line over here. So if you have a need for doing something like that, this is just one easy way to sew three independent patterns or pieces of your garment onto a single segment line. Right now of course we can go ahead and still edit our sewing uh, and so sometimes it's, it's better to use the 2D window to fix some of your sewing errors or if you want to alter the shape over here like maybe I don't like how this pattern is being created so I can just go back into my 2D window even even though I've got edit sewing select in, th in the 3D window I can still edit it within the 2, 2D window over here so I want to select that green seam line and maybe move this towards this location and move the green over here. So you'll see now, if I click simulate, I've altered that shape. All right, so that's just one way to go back and even adjust and alter the overall shape of uh, that piece that's been sewed on there. So there's a lot of flexibility and you can just do a lot of iterations using the edit sewing and the segment sewing, whether you're doing it in the 2D or the 3D window. All right, so the next feature that's been added in MD8 is absolutely fantastic. It makes me so happy that they've actually included their own dedicated remeshes. So that means you're going to get much cleaner topology straight out of Marvelous Designer now. So if I go to uh, this section over here and I click on Mesh, this is going to show me like a wireframe. It's, it's going to show me the topology on my mesh over here. So you can see everything is triangulated. And by default, this is what garments look like. And... The approach that I used to take before they added the remesher, I would select my entire garment, I would go to Edit, Context Menu, 3D Garment, and I would click on Quadrangulate. So Quadrangulate goes ahead and actually creates quads instead of triangles. But you can see the topology over here is quite randomized, and uh, it tries its best to give you some decent looking quads. Uh, but this is still not the best topology that you want to use. So I would export this out of here, take it to ZBrush, and use ZRemesher to get better topology. But you guys don't need to do that at all because MD8 has its own uh, remesher built directly into the program. So in order to remesh this to get much cleaner topology, what you want to make sure is both of these patterns are selected and the particle distance needs to be the same. So I'm actually going to put this on 15 for now. And then select both of those pieces. My particle distance is on 15 and they're both on 15. Right click and you'll see an option called remeshing beta. Now this is still in beta which means that community feedback is probably still going to improve this over time and it can only get better. So go ahead click on that and th there we go guys. This is fantastic. We've got a much cleaner layout of those quads uh, and it does it almost instantly. Well that was extremely quick, the way that it just remeshes this for you. And you don't have to rely on Z remesh anymore. Uh, but the fact that you can get clean topology like this straight out of MD, and maybe you can go and still edit the topology in another program if you wanted to make it even cleaner. But the fact that we can get topology like this, just in a matter of seconds, directly out of Marvelous Designer is fantastic, guys. I'm so happy that they've included a feature like this. And it's really going to save you guys a lot of time when it comes to doing some retopology on some of these garments. And then if you wanted to go back to the previous stage, just right click on here and click on undo remeshing. Right? So another cool thing is, okay, there we go, it's just undoing that. You can actually adjust the angle of your remesh. So you can see all of those quads were nice and straight on here. But if I selected this garment and let's say I rotated it like this, and then select both patterns and I said right click and go to remeshing, it's going to remesh it according to whatever angle 
that pattern is placed at. So if there's a particular need or a use for that, you can do that as well. So super easy to use and a great addition to the program. All right, guys, so if you've been following me, you probably still have this tank top in your scene. If you don't, just roll back to one of the previous videos. You'll see how I've actually created it because I'm going to use this as the example for our next feature. And our next feature is actually going to be fantastic. So here by simulation, they've actually added a sculpt mode. So by including the sculpt mode directly in Marvelous Design, it's going to allow us to maybe quickly fix some, some issues on our garments. Maybe there's some unnecessary folds we want to get rid of. Or we want to add in more prominent folds in certain areas on our garments. So I'm going to be showing you exactly how to use the sculpt workspace. Uh, it's pretty bare bones, uh, but it does its job. And then you guys can decide whether you'll be using this or not. I know for a fact I might be using this to fix some errors, but I'm still going to be doing the majority of my sculpting uh, with ZBrush as I just find it more com uh, comfortable to use and faster to use as well. So anyway, let's dive straight into the sculpt workspace. Alright, so ideally what I would want to do here is, you'll see that my topology, like I showed you earlier with the remeshing, my topology of here I've got quads, over here I have triangles, I'd want to make this, I'd want to go ahead and actually remesh this, right? I want to make sure I've got the best topology possible on my garment, it's just going to be easier to sculpt on, uh, I think later within ZBrush as well, just so I have really clean quads. And then uh, when you sculpt in, it's also going to be re reliant on your particle distance. Now, the lower this number is, it basically acts as a subdivision. So it's going to increase the overall quality. So if I put this on something, like if I put it on 10 or even as, as low as 5, when we go into the sculpting workspace, we're going to be seeing the details we sculpt in on our garment a lot better. So I'm actually going to just put this back on the thick textured surface. Actually, there's no thickness on here. I'll just put it on textured surface. So just keep that in mind. Your distance slide is also going to determine the overall quality and fidelity of the sculpt, the sculpt that's going to be applied onto your garment. Right, anyway, let's jump straight into it. So you want to click on that drop down arrow and click on sculpt. So it's going to go ahead and open up the sculpt workspace for you. So this is our sculpt workspace. Here are our sculpt brushes. We've got a sculpt brush, which is basically our bread and butter brush. This is the brush you'd use for adding uh, new folds on your design folds and wrinkles. So here by the property editor, each one of these brushes has its own unique sliders. And a lot of the stuff is self-explanatory. So just to demonstrate this quickly using the sculpt brush, I'm going to actually decrease the size over here. By default, it's n the brush is really not that large. I was just playing, in, uh, playing around with it earlier. But anyway, here is our cursor. So if I go ahead and I start dragging out on my garment over here, you can see some of the sculpt being applied. Now you can see that uh, there's actually some stair steppiness or spacing between uh, the brush that's been applied on you. And, and one way to fix that is to actually go to your spacing because this is going to determine how far the spacing is between each one of these sculpted details. Just bring that down to something like one and this is going to look like a more natural sculpt. Let me see. I'll just go in the back. See, there we go. This is going to look like a more natural sculpt and something you'd use for adding in new wrinkles or whatever on your garment, right? And you can go ahead and invert that as well so it becomes an indentation uh, on your garment. Now, obviously, the strength is quite high over here. There we go. You can click on invert and you can invert that, right? So one way to sculpt these wrinkles and folds. So it would be nice to toggle between invert, turn, toggling it on and off just to get a particular look and feel for your your wrinkles and your folds. Now over here by material type, right, this is not related to fabric preset at all. You want to kind of think of this as just a material or a color that's been applied onto this garment maybe to better see it. So you can just click on color and change the overall color of your garment. Now this is visible on all of these brushes. You'll have this option here on all of the brushes, right? And then obviously you can control the opacity as well, uh, the overall roughness, right? If you want it to be really shiny, it would just be very rough. And this double-sided option by default, this is actually not on. If I go back to simulation and I just create a rectangle quickly, all right? So just quickly create a rectangle within my scene, get that synchronized and just go back to sculpt. Right, so you don't see that rectangle that I created, but if I rotate to the front, there we go, I can see it from one particular angle. And that's because it's basically hiding that inverted face over there. So if I click on double-sided, 
Now I can see the back as well and you can see I can go ahead I can sculpt oops I can sculpt on the front and I can sculpt on the back as well and you can see it having having an effect on the front and the back so having that double sided checked is one way to combat that in case you guys don't see any back face on your garments or whatever shape that you guys are using okay something I forgot to mention is this image and this is available on all of these brushes over here except for the pinch brush but I find this to work better with the stamp brush but don't worry we so I'm still gonna be going over all of these brushes as well and showing you how they work on the garment but anyway if you click on this arrow uh, there's a bunch of these black and white images which are alphas so it basically replaces the default regular stroke of your brush to uh, imitate the overall design or pattern that you see over here so with the default stroke that's been applied on here remember it's just a regular straight line like this all right so I'll just undo that but if I select an image like something with all of this irregularity or different pattern on it if I go ahead and start dragging this out maybe I can increase the strength a bit and the size you'll see that it's not going to be just a regular straight line it's it's just got it's got like some irregularity there we go applied to it but I find this better to use with the stem brush but if you wanted to break up or add some irregularity to your strokes you can apply an image uh, to your strokes as well or just turn it off entirely okay so here's probably one of the most important things about the sculpting workspace and when I would actually use the sculpting workspace within marvelous designer so you can see we've gone into the workspace we've played around with some of these brushes now let's say you've gone ahead and you've actually sculpted some detail on here so you can see here some of that detail we sculpted earlier and for whatever sake we are happy with this right so I want to go out of here and I want to go back to simulation so this is where maybe some problems can come in because if I have sculpted all of this detail now but if I click on simulate all of my detail disappears right all of it's gone every single detail I've sculpted on here is no longer visible and I can kind of understand why they've done this because when you're simulating something obviously when we are adjusting and moving the garment there's going to be new wrinkles and folds that start appearing uh, but then this become this actually becomes pointless when we need to simulate our garment again right so one way to actually go ahead retaining some of our sculpted detail let me just undo this and get all of my detail back all right is to go into uh, actually when we come back into simulation we can use a feature on here I can select both of these patterns we can use a feature called solidify and solidify tries its best to retain any you know creases or folds in your garment it's going to try its best but it's you're still going to lose some of your sculpted detail but there we go you can see solidify is applied I've got simulation activated and I can still see some of that sculpted detail on here so this is one way to retain your sculpted detail on your garment and still be in the simulated window so you can see I can still push and pull stuff around but it is uh, solidify tries its best to retain the shape so it's not the best method to go about doing this but it is one way uh, to retain your details so what I was actually hoping marvelous designer would have done is you know in the workspace maybe apply the ability to actually bake uh, all of these details onto this iteration or this version of the garment and then maybe still be able to simulate it with those details still being there but like I said I can understand why that's not there at the moment maybe they'll add it later in development because with simulation like I said removing the garment there's going to be new folds and wrinkles but solidifying this is one way to combat that now uh, but ideally I still wouldn't do that the only time I would use the sculpt workspace now this is for me personally the only time I would use the sculpt workspace is when I'm 100% happy with my garment I've got it in a, in a pose that I'm happy with I made sure my topology you know I've got it all in quads it's nice and clean it's been remeshed and I'm happy with that pose you know right at the end of the project that is when I would go into sculpt because then you don't have to worry about simulation at all you can just go in here and start sculpting everything all the details that you need or smoothing certain areas then you can just go back to simulation and file and export out the OBJ so I would only use sculpting right at the end of my project not during the you know during the process when I think I'm still going to simulate something because solidify does work 
but it still makes your garment very rigid as it retains that shape. So for me personally, I would only use sculpting right at the end of a project. Okay, so I hope that answers some of you guys' questions regarding sculpting and simulation and you saw exactly what happens and just a temporary measure to help combat that and keep some of that sculpted detail if you still plan on using simulation. And maybe some of you guys are wondering, hey, what about the UV, right? I'm going ahead, I'm pushing and pulling polygons over here. Does that affect the UV? So if we go into the UV editor, the actual pattern or the shape over here, here's a UV tile, doesn't seem to be affected at all by any of the sculpting that we've done on our garment. So it seems to not affect the overall, what you call it, shape of our pattern on our UV air or to see if there's any distortion. Uh, that doesn't seem to be visible at all. Maybe I'm viewing this differently or I'm not viewing this correctly. Uh, but anyway, I don't see any distortion or any issues on the actual UV itself. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to simulation and I thought I'd just cover that anyway in case you guys are wondering. Okay, so I'm going to purposely go ahead and reset my garment. I don't want any of the sculpted detail on here. So this is probably still solidified. I'm going to unsolidify that, click on simulation, and bam, we are back to normal. So now the only time, like I said, I'm going to use sculpting at the end of my project, uh, but where it can re maybe really come in handy within MD and a brush that I'll probably use uh, quite a bit if I go into the sculpt workspace is going to be the next brush over here, which is smooth. Right, so again, this is something I can do really quickly, really easily uh, within ZBrush. And if you hold down Shift and you left click, so if I'm holding down Shift, if I'm on another brush, even if I'm on the Skull brush and I hold down Shift and click on over here, that's just a way to smooth. So that's a shortcut. And if you're using any of these brushes and you hold down B, it's going to bring up this window. So you can uh, toggle between the different brushes and you have the property editor editor settings here as well. So this is one way to increase the overall speed of when you sculpt in. So I can be sculpting, switch to smooth, smoothen that out. It's just one way to increase the speed of your overall workflow. Okay, so this brush over here I think is really, will really come in handy if you're creating comments and these really pronounced folds and wrinkles that you don't want. Again, you can check out these slider settings over here. You can go ahead and smooth out certain areas. So very, very useful brush. Uh, probably my favorite out of all of these is just the simple smooth brush because I know there's some garments I create and sometimes there's folds in certain areas that I don't really like and I can just go ahead and smoothen that out within Marvelous Designer instead of having to do that uh, in ZBrush. Okay, so the next brush is Grab. basically acts as a pool brush. So maybe you had pesky areas on your garment. Maybe some areas are actually sticking in. Right? You can go ahead. Maybe there's an area sticking in like this. You can go ahead. Uh, get the grab brush and just pull it. So you can see it's pushing and pulling our garment. So one way to also fix some errors uh, that have been applied on our garment. Self-explanatory, just like all of these settings, really easy to use as well. All right, so our next brush over here is called Stamp. And if you guys have used ZBrush, this kind of acts as like if you're using an alpha and you're using a drag rectangle type of alpha, uh, it's kind of like that. You can see the way it's been applied. It's very similar to how drag rectangle works in ZBrush. Um, but the cool thing about stamp is if I go to image and I use something like this image over here and increase the strength, I'm going to drag out. See that I'm dragging out that specific alpha. So you can see there's all those different folds, different lines that are being applied here. So it acts very, very similar to, to drag rectangle in ZBrush. And you can see while I'm dragging it out, I can just by rotating my mouse, I can determine the angle that it's being dragged out. So this brush can actually come in handy as well. Like I said, it's basically drag rectangle with an alpha from ZBrush. Uh, that's directly within, within MD. Super simple to use and also self-explanatory. Right, so our last brush is pinch and it does exactly what it says. It's going to go ahead and pinch. A certain area so if I wanted to make sharper folds I can see this is quite a big bulky fold of here I'll use pinch and now I can make these very prominent and sharper folds on my garment like that so again some really nice brushes they're very bare bones and if if you guys don't want to go to ZBrush maybe this is how you want to go ahead and sculpt your garments at the end of your project uh, they have given you some tools that you can use here that can maybe be uh, be useful for you guys. 
Uh, I'll see how I'll use it. I know I'll definitely be using that smooth brush just to fix some wrinkles and folds, but I'll still be doing the majority of my sculpting within ZBrush as I just find it quicker and easy to do. But the inclusion of a sculpt workspace in MD, I think, uh, is also fantastic. Okay, so that's going to be the end of our sculpt overview. You can see they've given you these brushes. I've covered uh, some issues you can encounter once you use it with simulation. One way to combat that would solidify. I've showed you that the UVs actually don't distort even though we're sculpting on this garment. And the inclusion of this is really nice. If this is something that you guys want to do within Marvelous Designer, you can decide. And I've recommended that you should probably use the sculpt's uh, uh, workspace at the end of a project to add in these finer details on your garment. Alright, so a new feature that's been added in MD8 is the ability to adjust the weight on buttons, zippers and OBJ trim. So the best way to demonstrate this, I'm going to create a rectangle over here quickly. Oops. Just click and create a rectangle. Click on OK. Move this up within my 3D workspace. Let me go to pin box. Drag some pins over here. Hold on shift and drag some more pins over here. Space bar for simulate. So I've got this piece of fabric just suspended and hanging in the air. I'm going to Go to fabric, fabric one, and let's just make this a lot darker. Then I'm going to go to the button, add a button here in the center. Remember this works for buttons, zippers, and OBJ trims. So I'm going to go to object browser, click on default button. Let's increase the width to something like 250 and the thickness to 30. All right, and by default, this weight is usually on 1.4. And there we go. This is the new option that's added we can now adjust the overall weight and the cool thing about this is we can now more accurately represent how much weight this object should have on this piece of fabric so on one one uh, comma four if i press spacebar to simulate you can see it's hardly got any effect on yet it's pulling it a little bit and if that's something you're going for that's great but a giant button like this would be quite heavy so now i can adjust the weight i can put on something like 50 and there we go we can see it's the the amount of weight that's been applied on here and that downforce and how this fabric is put in is a lot more prominent. You can even put on something like 100 and it's even stronger now. So being able to adjust that weight value I think is uh, actually a really, really great addition. And like I said, you'll see this weight slider for the zippers and any OBJ trims that you bring into your workspace. And OBJ trim is basically a way to import a custom OBJ, like maybe you made donuts, grenades, whatever <laughs> that you want to attach onto your garments and then have that weight actually be applied and have some type of gravity uh, that's been applied onto that piece of the fabric. All right, so that's how you do that. And just pay attention to that weight uh, slider or this weight option that's been added. All right, so this is actually from a marvelous designer video on their channel. And this was the last feature that they included. It's actually the ability to import OBJs and marvelous designer will actually go ahead and trace that UV pattern. So you can see they've got an object over here. It's been UV unwrapped. You're going back into marvelous designer. They're going to go ahead and import that OBJ. And when you're importing the OBJ, you want to load it as a garment and there's a trace 2D patterns from UV maps. You want to make sure that it's selected and when you go ahead and click on OK, it's actually going to go ahead and import the OBJ for you and trace that UV map. So again, it's a time saver for people that need something like this imported. And you can see over here, in this case, it actually sewed all of those different pieces together. Now, from my experience from using this, uh, there was a little bit of inconsistency with some of my objects and UVs. Uh, I would get the object to import, it will import the UVs as well, uh, but sometimes it wouldn't uh, be automatically sewn together, so it's kind of like a trial and error, but you can see in this case it really came in handy. That object that they had within 3D Studio Max has now been sewn within Marvelous Designer and it's got these fabric or simulation properties being applied to it. They're even pumping some pressure and air into this object over here. So really good inclusion if, if this is something you guys are going to be using with Marvelous Designer. Alright guys, so that's going to bring us to the end of our introduction to the six new key features within MD8. Now, of course, I just covered the six new key features, but if you head over to Marvelous Designer, there is some other small uh, little features and adjustments that they added in MD8 that you guys can go and check out as well. So just head over to their website. But anyway, my personal favorite features definitely has to be remeshing. 
sculpting and of course sewing within the 3d workspace anyway i hope this introduction helped you guys uh, familiarize yourself with the new features and as always guys thank you for watching my videos and tutorials stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye